Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the color corrector node. And to get started, we're going to go ahead and jump into Fusion where we already have some footage. And we're going to bring in the color corrector node. And you can do that by going up to the toolbar and dragging the color corrector node down. Alternatively, you can hit shift space and search color corrector and bring it in. Now the color corrector node is pretty much like any other color corrector node in any other program, but uh, it does have a few more options and we'll, we'll get to those. But starting out, you have multiple menu items within your color corrector node. We'll start with colors and in here you've got range. And just like all others, you can affect the shadows, midtones, highlights all separately. Just know that anything you do within here takes effect before anything done in the master. So within here, we've got a color wheel and you can just left mouse click and drag it around. You can affect your hue and sat with this outer ring, just dragging it around. You can also, uh, dial in numbers if you have specific numbers your tint mode down here better full and fast default is better but if you've got large footage you can go ahead and uh, put this on fast you can also individually affect your hue and sat right down here with these sliders your channels you've got individual RGB red green and blue channels and again they all affect independent independently your red channel and your blue channel are separate from your RGB. So we'll go ahead and reset all those. All right, up in the menus, we've got levels and this is just like any other levels adjustment. And just like the other one, shadows, midtones, highlights, and your master and individual channels for red, green, blue, and RGB. Up here, this uh, this is what's going to allow you to see individual parts within your uh, your histogram. So your color correction curve will show the correct curve level. I'll put your reference histogram and your input histogram. And down here, just like any other levels, you can adjust. You can adjust down here. You can adjust your clip levels over here or down here. We'll skip histogram. We'll go to suppress. And just like the other uh, menu items, we've got shadows, midtones, highlights, and your master. And this color wheel right here, what it's doing is it's actually suppressing these colors. So if we just drag our greens down, we can drag our yellows, drag our blues over. It's actually suppressing those colors. So you can see kind of how that's affected. And down here we've got options for individual channels. And your suppression angle, you can change it by bringing it around. And reset all suppression. Pretty simple. Now if we go to our histogram. Our histogram is just like any other histogram is kind of representing the distribution of our color, but this menu item has, has some other options down here. So we'll skip down to this histogram type. So right now with it on keep, it's, uh, it's just keeping this histogram data. So it's not making any changes whatsoever. Now, if we change it to equalize, what it's going to do is it's going to level out all the color information. You can see here on our new histogram, it kind of leveled all those out. And once it's level, you've got individual options for equalizing the luminance. Right now, it's not doing any equalization. If you bring it up 100%, you can lock the individual RGBs and affect them independently. You can equalize your RGB altogether 
And if you notice, we're getting these weird posterization effects happening here as we uh, equalize that. And that's what this uh, smooth correction down here is for. It's just smoothing out that correction, bringing it back to its, its normal histogram levels. So we'll reset that. Now one cool option in here is the match. So if we had other footage, we kind of want to match a little better to these colors. We could actually bring footage in and input it into this green input. And we'll switch that over. So you can see it's trying to match our input levels better. But there are a few other options so we can get a, a, a little closer. Let's go ahead and pin this. So first thing is the snapshot match time. So if you notice, both our footages are moving along in time. And this is constantly changing, which might make our color match constantly change. So what we could do is we could find a frame that really matches. Both eyes are open we can hit this snapshot match time. Now throughout the entire footage, it's gonna use this one frame to match all this instead of every single individual frame. So once we have our shot matched, we can start affecting our match luminance, which does nothing good for us. We can change our match RGB. We can actually bring that down a little bit and we can smooth correct so it's not so posterized. And down here, this match rectangle, if we hit show match rectangle, this green is what it's using to match the two pieces of footage. So we could tailor that down if we want to get rid of some of this white that's in the background. We could say bring it in. Bring it down a little bit so it matches a little closer. Additionally, we've got this white input down here. And what we could do is we can go ahead and make a polygon around her face. and input that into the white triangle. And now it's only using that area to match up our footage. So we can go back and try to make a little more adjustment. To try to make those two pieces of footage closer. So we went from this to this to match this. So it doesn't look great, but it's closer. And then once you uh, get closer, you can go back into your color and you can affect anything else you need. So we need to bring that contrast down a little bit. Maybe change our gamma. can just uh, color correct and make the changes we need. Now this node right down here, all this is doing is it's giving us an input for mask for the overall effect. So only anything within this mask is gonna be affected. As far as your other options, you've got ranges. Um, you can uh, see your final result and you can make any changes right here and make sure you select output range so you can see what's going on and to really be able to see what's going on if you go to our other channels you can kind of see how you're affecting that image and the simple down here and smooth just determine uh, how uh, how simple or smooth it is but you can see your individual channels as you affect and your final result for how you're outputting it and your options right here offer uh, additional stuff for
pre-divide and post-multiply in anything that's got an alpha channel in it. In your histogram proxy scale, this this determines the precision of your, your histograms. Lower values are better, higher values are uh, not as good. So the lower your value is, the more precise it is. And whether or not histogram ignores uh, transparent data, in this uh, process order, just tells you whether gamma is processed before or after your level changes. And then your settings, you've got your global blend and your uh, individual channels, as well as your apply mass inverted and all your other typical uh, final settings prior to your out. So that is the color corrector. See you in the next node.